Okay, here we go. Hello there, and welcome back to another dev interview. Today, it, he'll it's fix me it. he'll fix and it. Scotty J are going to have some burning questions for Chris Zierhut, one of the uh, members of the classic, wow, the Rathalichian classic uh, development team. Chris, how's it going? Where do I put it's myself? going well. Good. Amazing, amazing. Right. We have a bunch of questions. Obviously, we're, what, a week out right from here. launch? Is it next week? Well, mm -hmm. it's less than a week now, right? We're looking at five days. Yes. I'm really very excited. Sad. I love Wrath. Five it's days until Wrath Classic. Super. Oh my god. Yeah, I'm very excited as well. Everyone is. Yeah, five days seems crazy. I, I can't believe that it's this close. Yeah, every, every day I have new friends coming out of the woodwork saying, hey, are you playing Wrath Lich King? Is there room for in your guild? Can I join your raid team? You know, yeah, yeah. Every day, new people contact me. So it's pretty awesome. There's a lot of people excited for Wrath. Yeah, my brother, who hadn't played for many years, he, he messaged me. He was like, oh, I heard Wrath's coming back. It's like, yeah, yeah. He's yeah. like, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool. Well, we'll dive into the first one. Uh, pretty simple question, I guess, uh, for you, Chris. Um, one thing that's kind of different this time around with Wrath Lich King and TBC is with TBC... When it was originally announced, we had a list of phases which came out, and it was kind of announced mm. what was coming and it, all the different phases, which did change <laughs> over time uh, due to feedback and whatnot. And for Wrath, we haven't really had that officially, at least. Oh, so okay. could you talk a little bit about Wrath Classic sure. uh, phases? We'll have to get you that information. I think I think we know exactly what those phases are going to be. So obviously, we're starting at the beginning uh, with, with, with launch. Uh, initially, no raids are available, just dungeons available. Um, Winter Grasp is available from day one. As soon as you hit level 71, you can get in there. Um, That's and I think then the way it was. A yeah. week later, a week after, I think it's uh, Thursday after launch, the raids will become available. Uh, and that includes... Wait, the, the Thursday after launch. So that's like three or four days after. Is that right? Or is that the Thursday after launch, meaning like uh, the, the like 10... Oh, it's 10 days after. God damn. That's a while. 10 days. I actually, I'm going to keep it real. That's a good decision. They made a good call. The reason why is that nobody now who is going to play the game seriously will feel like they have to rush to raid. It's a good idea. People have plenty of time to get their best in slot gear out of heroics. Just enjoy the game. Explore around. It's good. Vault of Archibald. Yeah, 10, 10 days of Mega uh... Yep which you'll be able to get to if uh, someone on your server has won Winter Grasp. And then the raids will be uh, Naxxramas, uh, the Malgos raid in Eye of Eternity, and the uh, Sartharian encounter. Uh, so there's be an initial set of raids, and then we'll move into the, the later, the next phase will be opening up Ulduar, which is one of my favorite raids of all time. It's just got such amazing like architecture. Yeah, and I these, like this guy. He's a smart guy. kind of quirky hard modes where you have to do something special to trigger the harder mm -hmm. difficulty of the boss. It was just really a fantastic experience the first time around that so few of our players actually got to see the end of it in the original wrath of lich king you know, people people went back later with higher level characters to see it but very very few people we have the data got to see all the way through the yogs and and experience all those battles at level so i think for a lot of people it's gonna be a novel exciting experience seeing that and then uh we'll follow up the trial of the crusader uh, one change that we decided to make involving Trial of Crusader and Olduar is all of the item levels of the items that drop in Olduar is going to be increased. So they before they said they were thinking about it, now they said they're going to do it. Okay, that's good. Like, yeah, the suggestions that they put forward to the community were really good, and I hope that they implement them. That's good. Um, particularly much more so on the item, the drops from the hard modes. Hard mode, yeah. So the old war kind of lasts a little bit longer and competes better with Trial of the Crusader. Perfect. Perfect, the guys. There this is, is great. Is that items from heroic or hard mode old war bosses will be a little better than the items you get out of normal Trial of mm -hmm. the Crusader. So when you've got your guild of people, it's like, hey, I want to go back and still do those hard modes in old war. The yeah. first time around, people are like, yeah, this loot here is better. I don't want to go. This time, like, oh, yeah. There's a best in slot. Right, item you got to fill out the really amazing slots. item for me that I can exactly. get off that hard mode. Let's go back. Let's beat it. Let's do Yog Saron Zero Lights. Yep. Let's do that crazy difficult stuff. Which is smart. Um, and uh, so, so Trial of Crusader then will be an old orbit kind of running at the same time a little bit there. And then finally, after Trial of the Crusader, which also mm -hmm. includes one new dungeon, uh, the final raid tier will be Ice Crown Citadel, which has three new dungeons. 
And of course, that's the battle. Whenever he says one new dungeon, he does not mean, for anybody who's confused, he does not mean a new dungeon that's new, new. He just means Trial of the Champion and the Ice Crown patches, Halls of Reflection, uh, Pit of Sauron, and uh, fucking uh, the Halls of, not Halls of Origination, uh, fucking the, the first one. Uh, yeah, Soul Forge. Forge of Souls. All, all the way through to fight the lich king himself uh it's kind of kind of the whole story of arthas from beginning to end gets told in northrend and that's kind of the yeah. final chapter where are the dragons going to slot in there so we've got obviously anixia i, sh- I Anix- assume we're getting anixia yeah. oh yeah anixia if i remember correctly so i was in toc after this TLC. One. anixia comes in right between Old War and Trial of Crusader or around there? It's around mm-hmm. Trial of Crusader. I honestly don't remember. Yeah, it was um, after. I forget about the yeah. anniversary. It was kind of a side <laughs> thing. Um, and of it's course, we have the final, the final dragon encounter uh, at the end after Ice Crown Citadel. And that will happen sometime after Ice Crown Citadel opens. We don't have the exact calendar on that. Like Haleon. Yeah. yeah. Would, would that be an individual phase? So Ruby Sanctum, yeah. Would that, would that I don't be think, like a yeah. phase five or is it just going to be like a, an addition? It'll be an addition. Like we might... I, I, I can't say for sure yet because we haven't figured out all mm-hmm. the details, but I can imagine we'll have it, all of the data set up the same time Ice Crown Citadel's data set up, but we'll have an unlock at some later date where we can just unlock okay. the ability to go there. That's probably how I imagine it would That be. makes sense. Yeah. And then okay. Ruby Sanctum is kind of that final chapter on Wrath of Lich King. Cool. So while we're talking about sort of timeline... Let's be honest, there's no... It made no sense that Ruby Sanctum was in the game. Uh, like, I still don't understand why we had to kill Haleon. I have no idea in general mm-hmm. uh, obviously with tbc basically coming to a close now it was around it was actually just under a year i believe bef- between tbc launching and then the final phase hitting mm-hmm. as well so when some well opened obviously to some that seemed a bit quick to others it was just right you know obviously you're never mm-hmm. gonna be able to please everyone we know that uh, do we expect a similar amount of time in north end i think we're, we're planning on taking longer this time like it's okay, gonna be i think we're thinking more like closer not quite a year and a half i think but definitely longer than we took uh, on burning crusade to go through it all we felt like some of the phases of burning crusade we went through maybe a little bit too fast i feel like tier four and tier five were kind of fast and tier six wasn't but like i didn't play tbc a lot so i'm just kind of going off of like my gut feeling and kind of what i've seen from other people we're doing <laughs> a little bit more measured pace for some well for for uh ice cream yeah for Wrath of Lich king <laughs> That's cool. And you, you also, you mentioned, obviously, about the, the Alder War buffing the items. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, that's been well received, and that's going to have a, a, a number of changes, you know, to classes, mm-hmm. because they're going to have access to more armor pen, for example, or more yeah. crit, or more haste, whatever. Right. Uh, um, is that set in stone? You know, is that, is that, are we doing that I now? Think... You know, before it was just an idea, wasn't it? Oh, right. that's actually so a good we, question. We, we tried a few different ideas. I can kind of walk you through the process in that. Yeah. We knew that we felt very strongly that the first time around, Alduar didn't really get the room to breathe and to really get. I, I think they the should do it. Like kind of cut, cut off by Trial of the Crusader. So we knew we wanted to make some kind of a change to make Alduar last longer. Mm-hmm. And the first idea we floated, which was one of which was my idea, I'll take ownership of it, was that well, what if we took the Trial of the Crusader items and we lowered their item level a little bit so that so Alduar lasted longer, and then might make us lower Ice Crown Crusader item levels a little bit as well, and. The the downside to that is that a lot of people in the community are looking. I'm good that you didn't that you didn't get your idea. I, I do not like that idea. I, I I think that what they're doing is a better idea. Sorry. Looking forward to their characters kind of getting into that overpowered state at the end of uh, Wrath of Lich King, where their stats yeah, are so awesome. crazy high that ridiculous things. It's fun. Uh, I have to admit. As the system designer, the guy who comes up with the numbers, and I actually came up with all the original numbers for Wrath of Lich King and, and balanced all those, I, I swore we're, we are not going to need something like Sunwell Radiance again. We're not going to have to have you know a debuff that reduces everybody's uh, dodge chance or anything like that. So I tried to plan to make sure it wouldn't happen. We added, we yeah. had more raid tiers and more that? hard modes happen during Wrath of Lich King than was planned back you know, when we were first building it, yeah. the ideas grew as we built the expansion. So I was trying to fix that. I'll admit that. So mm-hmm. players didn't like that. We decided instead, well, make it a bonus, right? That's our, our design philosophy, lean into that. So instead, we're raising the item level on trial uh, on, yeah. uh, on uh, all of our drops, which sounds crazier than it is. Um, the plan is to raise the item level on the normal old Ward. I feel like being overpowered at the end is actually really fun. 
Like that that's not a bad thing at all. That that's a fun thing to do. That's awesome. Drops by six item levels. Which actually is very reasonable because mm -hmm. otherwise the old war twenty five drops are the exact same item level as Keltuzad drops. And I even remember back when I first did Old War, it's like, oh, this is a little bit disappointing. I've got something just as good off Keltuzad as what this guy just dropped. Like, why are we doing this new thing, right? Yeah, yeah. So raising those up six actually feels more appropriate. And then only two thirds of the bosses even have hard modes. And they only drop one item a week. And that one item being now 13 more item levels higher means that item is crazy powerful compared to everything else you can get, but you get very few of them. you got to decide carefully who do they go to, what do you use them for. That's great, because like what they're doing is they're investing in the future with drama. The, the best thing about classic WoW is loot drama. Let's be honest. Check WoW had Twitter, new achievement. Let me finish this. I'll pull it up. To it. So it sounds like it's a lot of increased power, but it's not a tremendous amount. It actually makes the whole expansion flow better. Mm -hmm. is, it, is that across the board? Sorry, is that is that ten yeah. man as well? It's ten and twenty-five. Ten, yes, or just ten will get 25? the exact same change. Okay, that's cool. Yes, ten will get the, in terms of the bump up, not what its item level will be. Um, just to elaborate more on some of those ideas, uh, one of the ideas that we floated also because we we're floating different ideas to community, yeah. we wanted to get community feedback, find out what do people like, what do they think is a bad mm -hmm. idea. One of the ideas we floated was, what if ten and twenty-five shared a lockout? This and is part only, of that yeah. This is for TOC. To say, well, what if we could make ten player loot the exact same loot as twenty five player loot, the same item level? Yeah. Because so it always been like ten loot was worse, you know. And in in our philosophy back then, and the more mature philosophy from the mainline game has been that you know it doesn't matter what your raid size is, you get the same power loot up either way. So the we problem were, was like whenever the ten man loot was just like always worse. The or yeah, it was always worse. Like the problem happened in Cataclysm. Whenever there were some fights that were harder on 25 man and some fights that were harder on 10 man and they were different fights and it just caused a lot of discord and like fucking frustration with both groups. It's like 25 man groups that get mad because like they're on the hard boss 10 man groups that get mad because they're on the hard boss. It was just it was it just didn't work trying that idea out, but we didn't want to make people unable to do both 10 and 25 because some people they have different groups of people they play with. Yeah, I play yeah. with my you know Friday night buddies doing ten, and then I do it with my serious team. We do the the twenty fives. You know, people wanted to still have those social groups. We didn't mm -hmm. mess that up, and that required the ten player loot staying not as good as the twenty five loot. But mm -hmm. we are going to make a change when Olduar unlocks. The loot that drops in the ten player raids is going to be replaced with the same loot that drops in the twenty five player raids. So that you, when you decide you want to go back and farm the instances you've already defeated, you actually can go back for better items. There's more incentive to go back and try to get those last few things you didn't get off Keltazad, Max Remus, or you didn't get off Malagos, etc. Um, and I don't know how that's gonna be. I really don't know. I'm not sure. Yeah, I, I mean, I I think this is good. I'm not a hundred percent. Let's yeah, let's keep going. All right. We, we think that'll help people that the first tier live a little bit longer that people will be more willing to go back gear up new characters do, do alts have have more social stuff if they can go back with only 10 instead of so he, yeah he's saying that like after the new content comes out they're going to make 10 man drop the same gear as 25 man and effectively make the instances almost like they are uh like their catch-up rates i feel like hmm because like wouldn't that kill the 25 man version after it's not the main the main raid that's my concern is like is that a bad thing for it to kill the 25 man version seems good for alts yeah 25 man gets more loot yeah if 25 man is like compensated in another way then i think it's okay the 25 to get still very powerful and, and relevant items and then the idea of what we're going to do is, well, what happens to all those items that dropped in 10-player Max Ramus and 10-player Malagos and 10-player Sartarian? Yeah, yeah. Those are going to move to drops in the Heroic Dungeons from an in increased difficulty. You'll be able to increase the difficulty of Heroic Dungeons to get better drops and more badges, uh, more emblems, I should say, off the bosses. So that this kind of, it's a change we're making. It's borrowing a little bit from the future game, but we think it's going to be really exciting and give all of that content more room to live and grow and, and be relevant.
holy that's shit incredible. that's like information overload my brain <laughs> like my brain right. sorry yeah i'm like thinking like holy shit so you're talking about mythic plus not necessarily mythic plus because he's saying heroic like he's not saying it's going to scale up infinitely or anything like that he's just saying there's going to be basically mythic dungeons in wrath of the lich king that drop raid level gear huh you will have to parse that whole thing. But, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm talking Heroic about this plus. for the first time. Yeah. It was the first time we're sharing this, but I got to go in for my team to talk about it. Uh, that, um, that is fantastic. Wow. Um, yeah. I think that's, yeah, perfect. Um, oh, one more thing, and then, so, yeah, yeah. sorry, I'll let Mr. GM. Oh, you're good. Um, <laughs> so when uh, we're talking about, you know, the increased item level in Aldua, I know it might seem quite insignificant in terms of, you know, it's only going to be a buff to certain classes for a short while until then it, it balances out again, but it's when we get into talk. But do you think we'll ever see a time where, like retail throughout the expansion, you, you know, each patch there'll be tuning different coefficients, spell coefficients, I hope you know, not. ratings and stuff like that. Do you think we'll ever see that to try and create more balance among the classes, but in classic? I hope not, yeah. I think uh, for Wrath of Lich King, that isn't the plan mm -hmm. uh, to Good. do that kind of fine tuning. I was part of the team that did that. We did every patch. We tuned things up, we tuned things down, we tweaked them a lot. And I think I it kind of... I do think that, like, for example, if one class is just, like, astronomically more powerful in, like, Old War because they have hard mode gear, maybe tune it down a little bit for, like, that patch. But, like, even if you do that, that's only going to be be the people that have the hard mode Old War gear. So everybody else is just going to be nerfed more than what they should be. You see, you see what I'm saying? Like, it, it, it's... It, it's Every time you fuck with those tuning knobs, it just messes up the whole game. It's like a butterfly effect. It makes players get a little exhausted with the game. Like, am, am I yeah. good this time? Did they nerf me? Did they? It creates. <laughs> it sucks. A lot of anxiety in players when you're doing that constantly. I think so. We're in a better place if we don't do that constantly. Mm -hmm. And so that's part of why we're using the final, the balance from the final patch of Wrath of Lich King rather than doing the balance bit by bit. Uh, in particular, Death Knights, we know, went out the door really strong. I talk about why yeah. in my video with Tom Chilton, if you want to watch that video. But yeah. Death Knights went out there really strong, and we players kept really finding strong. creative ways to make them do way more damage or tank better than we ever intended. So they, they got brought down several times to, to put them in a reasonable place. They're still really strong, you know. People are leveling up by soloing Blood Furnace on, on Blood Death Knights right now. So I can... People are saying, uh, if WoW gives you anxiety, quit. I think it's not anxiety, it's fatigue. It's frustrating for people to like have their class and like know how it works and then have it changed. And I think one of the good things about Wrath is that it's like kind of a fixed game that has a lot less tuning and stuff like that that's happening. They're very strong. They're very capable. Death Knights but we are brought them to more reasonable places. And some other classes had some problems where they were too strong or too weak, and that's all fixed. Another good example of that is uh, Death Knights raised the bar on AOE damage uh, when they were released, and so we added the AOE capabilities to several other classes and specializations that didn't have them at launch. So that end patch is a better uh -huh. place for us instead of being in a place where things like are kind of wobbly, not being capped uh, early on. All of that said, if it turns out that some class is so weak that no one wants to bring them, or so strong that they replace everyone else, that's when we would step in and say, okay, we've got to do something to fix this. That's normally the class I'm playing, and it doesn't matter what one it is either, which is weird, so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, that's brilliant, I, thank you. Yeah. I think that if you go back and you look at the value that each different class brings, I actually think that many of the classes were pretty good in ICC. And also, like, you have to keep in mind that these raids are not going to be as challenging as the retail WoW raids. So even if they're a little bit easier if you have certain classes, I, I think that, like, the problems in Classic WoW really rose up whenever you had a class like a Rep Paladin doing 25% of the damage as a warrior. That is what the issue is. If somebody's performing at 100% and the other person's performing at 80 and the class plays totally different and it has other advantages, then I think it's fine. Breaking news. I love that. That's amazing. Mm. Ellie Shaman? I'm not um, sure. I remember Ellie was okay. kind of bad, so I guess I kind I of remember. switching gears completely from that. <laughs> uh, sure. Season of Mastery, obviously wrapping up now with Dax mm -hmm. Ramis and things like that. Uh, I guess a lot of people, I, I, I kind of like, you know, asked on Twitter and stuff like that. A lot of people are curious about what's going on with transferring from season of mastery and when if there's any more updates on that because i believe it was announced it was you could transfer to wrath as well as we are yeah 
we are working on that. We were not able to get that working before Wrath of Lich King launched. We have a lot of priorities on our plate, things we're trying to get going, and we want people to be able to transfer from Season of Mastery into Wrath of Lich King if that's what they choose. Right, they don't have to, but they can. And they just weren't able to get that done in time. Um, it's something we want to do. I wish they would just say that more. Yeah, we couldn't do it. Uh, we're we're, we're going to get it done, but it's going to be late. Like, I, I wish that they would just be more honest and, like, direct with this stuff. Rather than, like, you know, oh, it's impossible for us to increase the server size and stuff like that. Like, oh, there's no way to solve this. Like, uh though there's something we're looking forward to in the future yeah it's fine awesome awesome uh one thing that came out recently that was completely out of nowhere and honestly i absolutely it does love suck, it. And i think though. the community was pretty happy about it too was the crossover with the death knight starting zone and that mount that came along and yeah that was, that was really cool great uh is that something we could see potentially in the future as well i i, I do love the crossover between it I'm, right. I'm sure no doubt you know there was a lot of people who were just you it know, will be the first of many dive into classic right for, yeah, it time. brought it brought a lot of people from the modern game to go try out classic, and some of them stuck around, so it works. They're now they're now playing and joining. It's a great idea to do this. Nights. Like I think it is a tremendous great idea for there to be incentives to go back and play classic WoW to get things in retail. I'm having a blast! So I think it was super successful. We were really excited about it, and we were really excited about the idea of doing that in the future. But yeah. I really can't tell you anything about what's happen now because nothing yet is planned excellent excellent well hopefully something um all right here comes the big ones for you chris <laughs> <laughs> so it's coming yeah a lot of people as i said asked on twitter and honestly 95 percent of the the questions were this and i guess it's kind of a a, a, a two a two part uh, so the first part is do you think the redesigned dungeon finder uh, that was added in Wrath of King Classic is a success, and how do you feel about that general system and how that's going so far? And obviously, as well, uh, will we ever see uh, the random dungeon finder from patch 3.3 Sorry. Uh, in Wrath of King Classic at any point? Okay, there's a lot to that question. So first, the, the, the improved looking for group tool, it's a work in progress. It's something we're that's trying good. to refine and improve. I don't think on. it's that great right now, but it's okay. On feedback. So we're, we took one. I think that the way they should handle the random group finder, the one that we got in Wrath, is just added in at, at TOC. Or added in at ICC. Yeah, just added in later into the expansion. That seems like the good idea. Look at all that feedback we saw online, all the problems people had with it, the bugs. There were definitely some bugs with it we're fixing. And and we can we're in committed to improving that tool only for dungeons making it yeah. better as much as we can over time as we collect feedback uh you know it's really important to us that, that tool work really well um i've used the looking for group channel and uh, i've used it before and it worked fine it's been okay but it could be improved in a lot of ways also i wanted to say that i think that they should add the random dungeon finder for all dungeons under 60 like 60 and under because you're never going to have people go all the way over to Desolus to do Maradon. You're never going to have people go all the way maybe to do... Like, you're going to have... Everybody's going to go and do ZF. They're going to do uh, Scarlet Monastery and, and, like, a couple of other dungeons. But you you have a number of other ones like Sunken Temple, etc. That you'd probably have some people do if they didn't have to travel all the way down to do them. And I do think that's a shortcoming of the game. And it would it would make the game better with, in my opinion, no downsides. Mods on mainline to help find groups the same mm -hmm. way. So I'm very attuned to that. Like, what are the things we're looking for? What do, what do we think will work best to help people reach out to other people on their server, find people to group with, make groups, yeah. and get into dungeons? So we definitely want to make that tool as, as good as we can. And I've been working a little with the, the engineer responsible for it uh, to make it as good as we can make it. That said... Um, Looking for dungeon, the tool is a very divisive topic. Obviously, there are yeah, some it people is. who passionately believe that we should not have it, and there's some people who just as passionately believe that we should have it. So it's really, can you win? You can't really win. That that that. Uh, I do not envy Blizzard's position in this because anything that they do will make people mad. They're absolutely right. Anything that they do will make people mad. What I've said before, what I think they need to do, I don't think server-specific matters. I think servers are stupid. I think that they should add it in as soon as possible for 60 dungeons and under, and then do what Classic WoW did. 
what Classic Raft did, like whenever the game came out, add it in later on in the expansion if people want it whenever less people are doing heroics. It seems simple. And the problem is that there's a lot of people that think, oh, well, you shouldn't, you know, you should just be able to find a group. It's like way harder to do that whenever you're on a smaller or a medium pop server. Like the difference between spending like two minutes to find a group in the group finder versus like 25 minutes to find a group in like a trade chat or trying to make your own group. That's the difference for some people to being able to play the game fully that night or not. Like I, I just, I don't think that it's fair for you to say that every single person on one of these smaller servers has to potentially add a plus 20 to the time frame that doing these dungeons takes. It's not fair to them. That conflict. So we have to look into what it is that we value about classic. Mm -hmm. One of our most important values about the classic experience is the social experience of meeting new people, building parties, building raids, building guilds, building social networks between guilds that you're cooperating and all these people you know on your server. Again, I want to say I think the strongest argument for random group finder for 80 level dungeons are uh, low pop and medium pop servers or population servers where they're like 90% horde, 10% alliance and the 10% alliance people, it takes really like a long time to make the groups. Like I think for a big server, you don't need random dungeon finder at all for level 80 dungeons. It's completely unnecessary. The people that you, you contact with on social media and communicate with and organize raids with, we want to keep that as strong as we can make it. That's our core value. Um, if our core value is we want to get people into dungeons and have them, you know, go through content and be able to play as much as they want, then, you then we would say, okay, we do want yeah. LFD. But if our core value is that we want to keep the social experience as strong as we can possibly make it, then we, mm -hmm. do. LFT is something that feels risky to us for classic. You know, it's a fantastic tool for the modern game, just taking many more steps in the direction of letting people play cross server. But where classic is, it would change things in a way we don't think would be healthy for the classic community. Um, there are other reasons uh, for not doing it. If we were to put in the LFD tool right at the beginning of classic, it would fundamentally change how you gear up your character. It would fundamentally change the experience and feel of that of those first few weeks on classic be, the classic lich king because you can do more dungeons you can do them faster you can do the same dungeon multiple times per day if you just keep a hundred percent it's a bad decision to have it in on release for 80 dungeons a hundred percent bad decision he's Bunch right about this completely heroics. people would gear up much much faster they would exhaust the content much, much faster. They go bored with it much faster. Uh, so we think there's there's risks just from the recreating the experience of Wrath Lich King as it was looking for dungeon at launch, could you know change that? It, it could be suck. a different experience. Yeah. But I do have some things that we are doing to help the experience for looking for dungeon. Okay. Which is another thing we, we, that I'm talking about this week for the first time with with the press. So we're borrowing. I also think that they should take you know like all the summoning stones out in the world. I don't like how there's level requirements on the summoning stones. I think that this is just an unnecessary restriction that makes the game more complicated for no reason. There's a reason they got taken out of the game way later on. They're just fucking annoying. That's it. They add no value to the game. They don't improve the player experience. They're just fucking annoying. They removed them in Wrath? Okay, good. Well, even the lower level ones in like Kalimdor and Eastern Kingdoms? Even those are getting removed? They still exist. Yeah, they shouldn't. They, they should not exist. There's no reason for them to exist. Bring an idea that came from later expansions from the looking, actually from the future looking for dungeon tool that was used in Cataclysm and beyond, Yeah. which is uh, we started giving rewards for tanks and healers when they were in shortage. So if you queued for, for looking for dungeon, there was always a complaint. There's not enough tanks and healers. We have a bunch of DPS sitting here for hours yeah. looking for one, right? Um, so if you are a tank or a healer and you complete a Wrath of the Lich King dungeon, when you kill the final boss, if the algorithm that I put together identifies you were the tank or you were the healer, you will receive uh, an extra reward bag. The reward bag will contain consumables 
as well as a small chance at a pet and a ma- or mount. And the idea here is what pet, if tanks what and mount? healers can get their consumables that they need to go to raids each week from going to heroic dungeons or regular dungeons, then they don't what pet, need to be out mount? in the world farming for those things instead or on an alt farming for those things. So there'll be more tanks and healers in the dungeon queues or in the groups looking for dungeons. So everyone will have an easier time getting a dungeon by uh, increasing that supply of tanks and healers. And that's oh. already implemented in Wrath King for launch. You're giving a super. Okay, so that's happening right off the rip. Okay, uh, that's crazy. More tanks and healers raid logged. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm yeah. I'm, it, it's gonna be the wait. It's the green proto drake. It's the white hawk strider. D- is there any actual information about what mount it is? It's invincible. It's invincible. Oh, it is. Okay, it's on Wowhead. All right, well, well, actually, you know what? Since, like, we're talking about it right this second, let me see if I can pull it up. Uh, Assuming that they don't just immediately talk about it right afterwards. Uh, Let me go back. I just want to see where it says it. Um, Pre-patch, best in slot. Tank in here. It's the cock? You're getting the white cock? There's even a small chance from very rare mounts like Death Chargers, Rain, Swift Hawk Strider, and Reigns of the Raven Lord. Uh, a mount said a mount from Kael'thas, leaving many people to speculate Ashes of Lara, but Chris could be referencing the swift, the white cock. And then, then Blizzard has confirmed it is the white cock. Okay. So we're not getting Ashes of Lara, we are just getting the white cock. Much information, I can't, I can't <laughs> handle it. Chris, I gotta, uh-huh. I gotta ask. What's, what's the mount? Yeah, that's what I was about to ask. Oh, it, yeah, it's on? similar to, oh. similar to what was done in later expansions. It draws from amounts from previous expansions that you can get. So yeah. there is a very, 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 very tiny chance of Baron Rivendare's mount, but it's there. Because there's always a tiny chance. Even like the the Cataclysm LFD tool had a very small chance of, of uh, Baron Rivendare's mount, as well as uh, the mounts from... Uh, I'm trying to remember the other mounts. The, the mount from Kael'thas and the mount from the South Lake Falls. Those three are all... Yeah, so those are the... Yeah, he's talking about five five-man mounts. So like you could get Rivendare's Death Charger, you could get uh, the Raven Lord or the White Cock. Uh, from Magister's Terrace Heroic. I think that's fine. All possible for the mounts. And there's a bunch of pets oh. that are also very hard to get um, that uh, tank. are available that way. Well, yeah, we're all re-rolling. <laughs> but it's a small chance. <laughs> what if there's, like, a mage that's so fucking bad at mechanics that in after the five-man dungeon is done, because the group had to carry him so hard and he took so much damage that the algorithm actually awards the mage with the bonus bag that has the mount in it. Um, <laughs> Mage Dakia? Yeah. Oh my god. I can't wait for this. I, I hope that I hope it's programmed like that. It'll be so fucking stupid. <laughs> but it's a small chance. Yeah. That's if incredible. that makes more people make tanks or more healers so that so that more people can do dungeons, that's yeah. fantastic. That's amazing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Can we can we just have random dungeon finder though? I mean <laughs> you can tell what uh, camp I'm in. Like, <laughs> I just want it. No, I just want it and I'm not scared to say it. You know? Yeah, I understand uh-huh. I understand why you want it. Um, but right now, the plan is not to put it into the game. Okay, that's fair enough. So All what right. about the pet from the achievement? Because it was mentioned in the very, I think, one of the yes. very first development updates that you've not forgot about Perky. I think that's his yes. name, Perky Pug. What, what's yes. going on with that? Yes, uh, we will find a way to deliver to the Perky Pug uh, using some of the same techniques that we're using to identify who the tank is. You could always tell the nubs in Wrath... Because they had the patient title and the perky pug out. Like, if you saw somebody with the patient title and the perky pug, you're like, that's a nub right there. Like, this guy has no fucking idea how the game works. Got no clue. Right, we can use that to keep track of how many... Jenkins? I think Jenkins is even better than that. Okay. Cool. Uh, It has not yet been implemented, though, so it's not in yet, but we will get it in. But it will be in. Okay, that's cool. Uh, so slightly off topic, but it is, it's something that you mentioned yourself about Death Knight solo in uh, mm-hmm. Blood Furnace. So I'm about to become one of the most hated people on YouTube, but to be oh, fair, mm. it can't get much worse than it is. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> uh, a lot of people are already planning how they're going to level you know, to 80, what they're going to do in Wrath. And obviously you would have seen yourself and you'll all be aware, solo in Utgard Keep, solo in Nexus, solo in Old Kingdom, all of this you know, with very, very high-end TBC gear seems yeah. like a very popular way 
is this something that is like, you know, it's just going to be left as it is? Because I know there's been a lot of changes to ways of getting XP, like, for example, stacking up on the fishing item from TBC. Right. Should never fuck it. Like, as long as it's not some, like, goofball shit. It's, you should just let people do what they want to do, right? Like, don't change dungeon experience. Like, if somebody does it, like, if somebody wants to dungeon grind to 80, then let them dungeon grind to 80. Who cares? Just let them play the game the way they want. Hey, that got changed. So, you know, it, it's more like, are we safe to prep? And, like, you know, that side of things is not going to get nerfed? Or was it not think, on your think, radar and I've just ruined I, it for everyone? Nothing is on my radar about that. We don't oh. have a big problem with people doing that. At least I don't. Who cares? Um, yeah, who cares? You can find ways to use all the gear that you earned from from someone Black Temple. Dude, that's, like, one of the coolest parts. He's like, you go in... And, like, you have this badass fucking gear, and you just stomp the shit out of the new expansion. Like, you go in there, like, it's like whenever you came in the Cares Inn, you were fully fucking kitted out in Tier 3. You just ate, you just took a Tuman's dick, and you just fucking, bit, you bit that shit right off. You said, give me the fucking mount, and that's it, it's done. You don't need to worry about anything. You just go right into the new raid. It's Tier 3, Tier 4. It's not Tier 3, Tier 17. Just go right in there. That was one of the best things about TBC, like from, from vanilla to TBC, is like the vanilla Wrath shit, or sorry, Knack shit, was so fucking good that you could use it in Karazhan. I thought that was awesome. The same thing happens in Wrath, but it's not as prevalent. Item level difference. Keep in mind, uh, so talk about item levels. So item levels in Karazhan after the item level buff that occurred uh, after Karazhan, nobody wanted to do Karazhan whenever BC actually came out. Um, the item level in Karazhan is uh, 110. And then the item levels for, I believe, Prince Malkazar and Nightbane are 115, I believe. I'm not 100% sure on that. Uh, it could be 120 or 125. And then if you go over to the item levels for gear in uh, Wrath of the, sorry, in, in Classic WoW, uh, the item levels of Kel'Thuzad level gear are item level 90 or 95 so it's actually a much smaller difference and if you look at the uh the loot from uh the loot from fucking uh burning crusade uh kill jaden exclusively drops 164 item level gear and so you take 164 item level gear and then you go all the way up to 200 or 213. 200 is next 10 man, 213 is next 25. So it's a bigger difference. And I do understand that proportionally it's not really that much of a bigger difference because of the, uh, you know, it's like you're going from 200 to 100 as well. So like the, the proportion percentage wise is not quite that big. But yes, it is, uh, it is still going to happen. Cool to go through and solo a dungeon as a tank and have, have a blast, have fun. I'm not sure it's going to be the, the fastest way. Link it to me on Twitter. Level, Link me the, uh, the post with the hooded t-shirt on Twitter. People. But if, they, if, you, if that's what's entertaining for you, there's, we're not we're not here to stop you from having your fun. Mm -hmm. um, let's see. I did have something else I was going to say on that. Oh, I do want to point out that those rewards for being a tank and healer do require you to be in a group. So if you are solo tanking, you will not have a chance at those rewards. Uh, you'll need to bring a group with you to have a chance at those rewards. Okay. okay. And, oh, so oh, just on that, sorry, going back. So do you have yeah. to be using the LFG tool? Or technically, could oh, you no. put a guild group together and you'll still get you the reward? You could put any group together. It, oh, it okay. doesn't It doesn't have any knowledge. Because the LFG tool is just a tool to help you find friends. It's, mm -hmm. not, it's not a contract. It's not putting you in the dungeon. So any group you put together. Okay, cool. The reason why that happens is probably so it's not... It's probably because the healing and the tank bonuses are exclusionary. So what that means is like, for example, like if you're a paladin tank or a DK tank, you will probably outheal the healer in a lot of five man dungeons. So if it gave you both bags, then it kind of wouldn't be fair, right? Now you could actually, you, you could code around this. Maybe they'll do that. But I think it's like, it doesn't like, who's going to go around soloing end level dungeons for these bags. It's just not going to happen. It, it's not efficient for anything. Excellent. Amazing. Uh, so one thing that was mentioned a while, a while back. We probably detect um, class. 
there was, I, th I believe it was a change in philosophy yeah, or something like that with the Wrath of Lich King built-in quest helper. Uh, I believe originally it wasn't planned, and then it, then I think it came they out. They added it, it later, right? Potentially coming eventually. Uh, do you have any updates on on that one? Uh, I know that's something we have as a work in progress. It just was more work to get it back working correctly than we had time to get done to get Wrath of Lich King out. Um, and I think that nobody cares if it's not ready. Everybody's been using Questy ever since Classic WoW. Who gives a fuck? Initially, our thought was, you know, it wasn't something we had at launch, so it's not something we should try to have in Lich King at launch. Yeah. Uh, it was added later, really close to the to the uh, launch of the next expansion. It was kind of part of that. Like, I was there for the process of putting it in. The, that, that UI change was made as part of the run-up to the next expansion and part of the preparation for it. That said, though, players really want it players are using it a lot um it's almost yeah. universal that people players are using mods to fill that same role and the mods just aren't thank you quite as good as the built-in ui so we decided after uh mods are not quite as good as the built-in ui that is generally true yes the built-in ui is slightly better in most cases really thinking about it more that we're okay with putting it in we just didn't have time to get it ready for launch excellent thank you I've got a very biased one. Um, so I'm, I'm playing on... I, I can't help it. I, I'm sorry. Uh, I, so I'm playing on the uh, fresh servers, the fresh ref servers, which okay. right away, amazing decision to put them on, uh, you know, put mm -hmm. them out. Absolutely loving it. Probably the best time I've had on Classic since it launched. It's right, been a lot of fun. So I've had fun too. Um, how do you feel that it's received? I know it's a bit of a, a broad question, you know, but do you feel like, has it been received well enough that potentially if we was to go into Cataclysm or wherever we go next, that we might see more of them? Yeah, I think I think we'll we will keep on doing it. I think Cataclysm actually, you know, I'm speaking a little bit of the future, but remembering the first time Cataclysm came out because it changed uh -huh. all the quests out in the world. I leveled up a new character from level one during Cataclysm and on the side for my main character, but but you know, to experience all that stuff and to see it. So I think if there's any expansion is most appropriate to, that's the one. But uh, that's the fifth That does make sense because like they revamp the problem is like See, like, since I was a neckbeard completionist in Cataclysm, I went through and I did all of the old content revamps. So Cataclysm had a lot more content for me than it would have had for somebody who just was a PvP -er or a raider. So I actually really enjoyed Cataclysm because I went through and I experienced all this extra content. I do think it would be really cool if they were able to alpha fresh servers for Cataclysm so everybody could play through all the new quests and everything. But to be keep, to be fair, all the new quests are the same quests that are still in the game now for retail. Wow! So it's like, is it really the new quests? I feel like with the success of the fresh server this time around, it would be foolish not to do it again. Future, but I'm sure because of the popularity, because of the you know very positive reception, that's something we will definitely be wanting to do uh, for uh, each expansion, probably. Maybe. Yes, brilliant to hear. Uh, do you want to do you want to end with your last question because it's probably going to be a big one. Uh, uh -oh. well, What's got, coming at me? Well, I got. We could do two. I reckon. I reckon because the you first reckon? one's just going to be just a, a real quickie. I actually already know the answer the to it, ones. so I weren't going to waste time. But I will anyway. Jo uh, so, uh, oh. oh, sorry, it's yours. Go. It I just me. know because I've just watched <laughs> Brian Birmingham. What? Oh, there's more in it. Oh no. All right. Well, either way, we'll we'll repeat it. Uh, so, joyous journeys. Uh, obviously, the, the just keep it in the game. Uh, mm -hmm. Buff to XP, amazing. Just keep it in the game uh, for I'm sure it brought a lot under of seventy. In. It brought me back leveling again yep. keep uh, it in the during game. that time uh is this something we might see again in the future to promote people leveling alts uh we definitely really liked the reception for joyous journeys i've been leveling up characters of joyous journeys too so i've had a first-hand experience of feeling what it feels yeah. like we i think we were concerned that giving a large xp like buff buff like that might damage the flow of questing right that you i actually think it does the opposite it makes it better because that way you don't have to do a lot of the shitty and annoying quests like, you can do them if you have, like, some nostalgia for them or something like that, but you actually don't have to sit through and fuck around with all of the, like, annoying, um, like, just the, the obnoxious ones. And you can just do the zones that you want to do. And also, like, you think about joyous journeys. Like, we're already going to be getting heirlooms that give you 20%, because obviously I think it was the, uh, the chest piece at the beginning, and then they added the legs. I don't know if the helmet came out in Wrath as well. I don't remember. So it's at least 20% already. 
You so might yeah, I level think... up too fast, and the quest flow would just get messed up. Yeah, and honestly, I've been that leveling a character, and it feels fantastic. It does. It's great. Um, it really it works well. It means you can skip some quests. It means you don't do to every zone, every zone, but that's fine. Um, and uh, so I think we're we're likely to consider doing that in the future. Just keep it in the game. Talking about doing it in the future. Keep it in the game like for the seventy and under. Uh, but I can't promise anything. It's just, but it is something we really thought worked well. Pre-watch. Yes. Amazing. Man. Thank Definitely. you. All right, last one, Chris. You ready? It's mm -hmm. a biggie. Uh, so season mastery obviously wrapping up now as well, uh, Ooh, and um, this is a good so one. I guess it's a, it's a two part. So what I guess what's next for season mastery in regards to so how do you feel about the tabard that was given for the deathless nax raid? How do you how do you feel like uh, how do you feel like it looked? Did it look good? What did it look like? You know like how 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 would that go? Is it going to be a TBC season mastery or something like that? Mm. And then obviously. Elephant in the Room, you know, Cataclysm Classic survey came out. Everyone's talking about it. Everyone's speculating what's going to go on. So what's the kind of thoughts on what's next for Rathich and Classic after, obviously, Arthas and uh, the true endgame yeah, of Sanctum is defeated? Another season of Mastery, <laughs> yeah. The this epilogue. is a good question. Yes. Um, so the, we really want, as we move forward, to be driven by what the community of Classic players want. It makes sense. Classic is an experience that came it only exists because players wanted it. It, was, it would never have happened True. if players hadn't had such a strong demand for it, hadn't expressed how much they, they wanted it. So we're looking we to see listened. what does the community want to see next? What do you want to see next? Communicate that to us. Like, I spend time. OK, all right, fine. Uh, I want to I want Classic Plus. I think Classic Plus is going to be better. Uh, I think add in a lot of the Wrath of the Lich King features and reimagine the future of the game with Classic Plus, add in new raids. That's what I want. Uh, whether it's Wrath Plus or Classic Plus, I don't really care as long as we get a Scarlet Crusade raid. doesn't matter to me. And, and like, you know, make uh, Grim Batal instead of a dungeon, make it a raid. Uh, add the Dragon Isles in, like, the Classic version. Uh, add in the Emerald Dream, stuff like that, crazy shit. Yeah, that, that's, what I, that's what I wish they would do. I'm reading forums, reading Reddit, going places, social media, seeing what people have to say. All of us on the team do. I know sometimes uh, players get the impression we don't. We definitely spend time you know, reading that stuff, yes. finding out what's going on. We have people who give us reports on what, what's being said. On, and so <laughs> Imagine being the guy. <laughs> yeah, so uh, uh, Asmongold said the game sucks again. So, like, oh, wow. Okay, all right, well. What else? Social media. So, <clears throat> damn it again. Let us know what it is you want next, and that that survey that, that leaked is part of trying to find out what is that thing that players want to see next. And based on that, we'll make a decision. I can't say that we're really mm -hmm. happy with season of mastery as the kind of the first of its type, where we tried to make a slightly different world of Warcraft for players. It was bad. Season of mastery was bad. And they tried. I think it's good that they tried. But it was not good. It was bad. I like thank you for just being honest about it. That doesn't mean you shouldn't try it again. It just means that you should try better. That's all. It yeah, it was badly handled in many ways. There's to experience and we're excited to uh to uh do new things like that. Um a good example of that is what I talked to earlier about um, for for Wrath Lich King, we're going to have an opportunity to do harder the harder heroic dungeons for the drops that used to be yeah. in the next Ramus 10 player dungeon, 10 player raid. You know, that's an idea that only came possible because we're drawing ideas out of Season of Mastery. So, well, this worked in Season of Mastery. Let's try to see if we can do it here. So we're, we're constantly looking at those ideas, and Season of Mastery helped us kind of figure out what was possible, and, mm -hmm. and we're looking to do more things like that in the future. But again, can't promise anything you on the other hand can go on to to social media can go to things like that leak survey and give us your opinion and that will help us to decide the leak survey <laughs> excellent Amazing. yeah cool well thank you very much for your time chris really appreciate yeah. it yeah thanks uh, chris awesome yeah, answers. thank you and uh looking forward to ratish king next week yeah, yeah. <laughs> me too me too we're all looking forward to it. everybody's crazy about it on my guild right now Awesome. That's crazy. Right, so. I, it's yeah, so crazy. Again, it's soon. Yeah, no, it's brilliant. It's this soon, Perfect. man. Oh my god.
that was a uh, that was a really good interview. Uh, I would wow. say, like, shout out to Hello. Mr. GM for doing it. I think this was really well put together, and uh, you know, they answered a lot of good questions. I'm gonna link you guys the uh, the video right there. You want to go ahead and uh, give Mr. GM a follow, give him a little bit of support. This guy spends a lot of time uh, doing WoW content nowadays, especially. So uh, I'm uh, very much glad to see it. Very, very much glad to see it. Thanks, man. Yeah, absolutely, dude. Keep up the good work. You've been killing it. Like, this is, uh, it, it's great to see. Absolutely fucking great to see. So, yeah, you guys asked some really good questions, too. I was, uh, I, I was impressed. I liked it. Especially the Season of Mastery thing. I also was impressed, like, at, at the guy's answers. Like, you know, he, he's not, he, he's not doing a, a run around. He's not like, oh, well, Season of Mastery is like, yeah, so we're not really that happy with how it turned out. It's like, okay, thank you. Thank you, finally. Everybody knows it was not good. It's not good. All right, yes. Okay, for sure. Yes, thank you. It's almost human. Almost. Yes, it's getting good. Now, I did see that you guys have been telling me about this. Um, take a look at it. Uh, there is a new, uh, a new mount that's been added into the game. New mount for 500 mounts meta achievement. Otherworldly otter carrier. That's right. You get a flying ghost walrus. Okay. You know what? I'll take it. I'll take it third time's the charm, guys. Good job. That's fine. Yep. Uh, I I'm satisfied. It it's not my golden pegasus. That's okay. This is good enough. I like it. Yeah, it's what I always wanted, Spirit Noodle. Yeah, well, we are, we already have one of those. It's like the Elegon mount, but we have this one now, too. This is great. I'm happy. And oh, wait. You can swim faster with... Oh, my God. Bro. This mount's overpowered, man. It's going to break the game. You're going to be able to swim with this mount and go faster with the swim... Oh, my God, bro. That's pay to win. Like, guys, this is... Oh, my God. Retail Classic. This is in uh, in, in Retail WoW. This it's, it's in Retail WoW. It's not in Classic WoW. Wow, bro. Like, this shit's broken. So many more pet battles I can do. No, you can't because you don't have Soar. So it's okay. God damn. This is badass. I'm glad to see it, man. I really am. And so, uh, hopefully they, uh, you know, hopefully this is going to be a fun mount to have in the game. I like the way it looks, and, um, I'm also really happy to see Blizzard. You know, they tried it the first time, it was an L. They tried it the second time, another L. And now, the third time around, they keep trying until they get one the community likes, and it seems like people generally like this. I think it should be commended that Blizzard has gone back on this a couple of times, uh, back to the drawing board, and they've been committed to delivering something the community enjoys. This is an actual W. This is an actual... I think this is a capital W by Blizzard. Not only because I think the mount is cool, but the fact that they responded to feedback in this way. This is huge. Thank you, Blizzard. Good job. I'm happy. Now, hopefully there's not 30 other otters in Dragonflight. There are more otters in Dragonflight. There definitely are, but there are no spectral otters. This mount will stand out, and it will be special. Absolutely, it will be special. It will be just as special as the Frenzied Fell Talon, which is just a recolored uh, fucking Flame Talon of a List Resort or Void Talon of the Dark Star. It's the exact same thing. 